Mr. Flood, a new member of our committee from Nebraska. Welcome. You are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you all for your testimony today. I want to turn uh, the attention to exactly why we have seen a rise in gun sales in America. According to FBI statistics, specifically those related to uh, lawful uh, purchases of handguns and other types of uh, guns uh, through background checks, nationally 75 percent uh, has been the increase that we've seen from 2019 to 2020. In Nebraska, we've seen a 78 percent increase in background checks related to gun purchases just in my home state. National research has also shown roughly 70 percent of gun owners are citing personal protection as their major reason for purchasing a firearm. Unfortunately, over the last two years, violent crime across America has dramatically increased. That crime wave has affected my district. In Lincoln, Nebraska, for example, violent crime is increasing and citizens are concerned. And so, Kapoor, I appreciate your prior testimony today where you called yourself an accidental activist. Uh, I know you train gun owners on proper etiquette. I'm really interested in knowing from those who you work with, particularly women, what reasons do they cite for purchasing a gun and uh, what does having uh, ownership of a gun do for them personally and is it related to what we've seen as an increase in violent crime? Uh, studies have shown uh, nationally that for women the number one reason they buy, they buy a firearm is for self-defense. Um, and in my time, my personal time with my female students, uh, most of them are, like me, uh, survivors of crime. They are survivors of domestic violence, survivors of sexual assault, um, et cetera. So they essentially come to me because they want to make sure they're never a victim again. And that's why they want to be able to learn how to use a firearm and use it safely. Some would have you believe that uh banning AR-15s is going to make America a safer place. Talk about what your students are saying about using the AR-15 and what, uh, what is their opinion as to whether or not, if you can testify to this, uh, a ban would do. Well, it really comes down practically of what an AR-15 does, uh, particularly a rifle um, for a, a woman especially, or those who have any type of physical disability. Uh, they give you the upper hand in that situation um, in the fact that most people, uh, probably a criminal, might have a handgun, but if you're working with a, an assailant that has multiple assailants in that situation, then an AR-15 is necessary, obviously, as, as an, a way to have the upper hand in that situation, particularly for a female. Um, like I said before in my testimony about AR-15s, you're able to mitigate the recoil much better than you would with a, a handgun. And so that's why a lot of people prefer to have that upper hand by having an AR-15. Was it your prior testimony today that uh, of all the weapons that uh, your female students have sampled that the AR-15 was routinely one of their most, you know, a favorite? Yes, that's what I routinely get is that other women um, tend to already have this preconceived idea what an AR-15 is or what an AR is and, and because of a lot of advertising um, and rhetoric saying that you know, they shouldn't have a firearm of that capacity that they think would be something that they wouldn't enjoy until they actually shoot one. Um, and they realize it's actually a benefit to them and, and it's easier for them to hold and to actually enjoy shooting um, so they can train and defend themselves if they ever have to use that in an unfortunate circumstance. We don't have much time left, but could you just briefly speak to the peace of mind that owning a weapon like this would give to one of those female students that you have um, instructed with firearms? Yeah, the peace of mind is, I, I believe, similar to anybody, um, but again, particularly in, in America. Um, I know there's a lot of talk, there's been a lot of talk about weapons of war, et cetera, um, and the difference, as if the Constitution is not explicit in that we have a right to keep and bear arms, and that includes all arms. Yes, even quote-unquote weapons of war. At the end of the day, it's to make sure that we have 
the ability to defend against an oppressive uh, tyrannical government. And there is no restriction, um, particularly with the Second Amendment, that says that there's a distinction between a civilian and someone in the military. So it comes down to an individual's right to defend themselves and to figure out what is best for them to defend themselves in that situation, and that's it. Thank you for your testimony. I yield back. 